Yo, what is going down, everybody? It is straight out of Boston. And today I'm back for episode number 23 of my Boston Bruins Be a GM series here in NHL 16. So in the last episode, uh, we played that Pittsburgh Penguins game on the 14th of November, but apparently I forgot to save at the end of that, so I lost the, uh, or basically I lost the simulation for that part. So we have to re-go through it. I'm not going to play the game again. I'm just going to sim through it and move on to the next game I was planning on playing. But um, one thing to remember is Ryan Spooner got hurt with a concussion that episode, so that injury does not happen anymore. He is healthy and ready to go. But this time around, Brad Marchand gets hurt, so it kind of evens out. In fact, I'd rather lose Spooner than Marchand, so um, Marchand's going to be out for like two weeks less than Spooner would have been out, so I think it kind of evens out at the end of the day, but anyway, just had to explain that. So a lot of you have been wondering where the series has been. Um, I've just been focusing on my other two series at the moment just because, um, for one, those are two of the more popular series on my channel. This one doesn't quite get as many views, and not that I really care about that stuff too, too much, but at the same time, uh, I'm going to be trying to focus on, you know, what the people are watching for the most part. And then on top of that, I really wasn't even having that much fun playing this series uh, the last couple times that I recorded just because I was winning every game like four or five to one. Um, I was not, you know, and it's, it's just because NHL, I think I just have played so much NHL at this point. I kind of know or figured out the game to an extent that it's just like kind of hard for it to be competitive. Um, I played on the highest difficulty. I played on hardcore and this game is going to be competitive i will promise you that i'm not going to say who wins but it is a competitive game so hopefully uh, moving forward we won't have so many blowouts anymore and it can make for some more entertaining videos but here as you can see we have the second best record in the nhl the first best record in the east and for the five the four of the top five teams in the east come from our division so it's a loaded division we're going to be playing a division opponent this episode it is going to be the florida panthers take a look at the points leaders on the team austin matthews leading the way with 22 points in 25 games and then there you can see the panthers third place in the division we are taking them on like i said they're they're uh, one of those top four teams in our division that are probably going to be competing with us really all season long. I mean, we'll see if maybe one or two of them kind of fall out at the end or, you know, it's hard. It's hard. I mean, all, all four teams are playing at such a high pace. You would think that eventually, uh, maybe all four of us are probably going to drift off from the pace at some point, but it seems like there are four series contenders coming out of our division this year. So Ras still having a good year. He's got his uh, save percentage up over 930. Luongo also having a good year. His save percentage is at exactly 930. So a matchup of two good defensive teams, two good goaltending teams. This should be a good one here tonight from the TD Garden. And I wanted to wear the Winter Classic jerseys, but for some reason I couldn't select them. Um, I hadn't played this since they updated the game to include the Winter Classic jerseys. And, man, I love those jerseys. <laughs> I wish they would wear those more often. Um, so I really wanted to wear them this episode, but I don't know. I, I, maybe, I don't know if I, have to, if I would have to start like a new be a GM to get the new jerseys. But either way, maybe I just... Uh, I don't know what it is. Maybe I didn't update my game or something. Who knows? But I, whatever. I would like to play with them in the future. Either way, here we go, though. We are on the penalty kill to start out this game. So we get a nice uh, sequence right there. And then here we go on the PK. It's Bergeron, but a good stick check right there by Luongo. Got the puck off of Bergeron's stick. He could have had a nice breakaway opportunity. So here's Kevin Hayes using his big body right here to get around the defenders. Hold on to the puck. Now gets into the slot and scores. Kevin Hayes with the snipe goes top shelf where Mama hides the cookies, and Hayes puts the Bruins up one to nothing, getting this one by Luongo. Take a look at the replay. Good zone entry by him. Stayed patient with the puck, waited for things to develop, and then got around the two guys, the uh, two Panther defenders right there, and put that one top shelf, like I said, past Luongo. So we take a one to nothing lead here about midway through the first period now. Here are the Panthers trying to respond. That one gets dumped behind the net, retrieved by one of the defensemen. Here is a slapper from the point. That is saved. Rass scrambles to try and keep that one out of the net. He does just that. So a battle along the boards here. It is retrieved by the Panthers. Tenorti to Trocek. Trocek trying to keep it. Tenorti, he's going to eventually give this one off to Ekblad. A bad defensive play on my part. And then Ekblad is going to snipe that one by Tuka Rask there and make it a one-to-one -one game. So the, Anther, the, the, Anthers, the Panthers, excuse me, uh, respond pretty quickly right there as they nodded up. You can see I was just over-aggressive with Jimmy Hayes right there. But Jimmy Hayes is a guy to keep an eye on. So I showed the clip earlier in the episode of him kind of being discontent with his uh, playing time. Now with the Martian injury, he is going to bump up to the third line. I move Pasternak up to the the first line so Hayes is going to get to see some extended minutes over the next couple of weeks and it'll be an interesting uh, test for him because I thought he actually had a pretty good game here tonight I'll try to point out uh, you know the moments that I thought he was looking good but he really was around the puck a lot you know crashing the net uh, using his big body trying to get some extra chances for us here he sets up a pass to his brother Kevin Hayes Hayes can't really do anything with it but then Jimmy comes there is one instance where he just gets to the net and had a nice little rebound opportunity but could not put it by Luongo so and it would be enough the first period still not up at one but like I said Jimmy Hayes 
Um, you know, he's a guy moving forward that I think if we were to look at the trade deadline and think, you know, maybe we needed a little bit of extra cap space to make a move, Hayes is definitely expendable. He's in the last year of a contract in which he's earning $2.3 million, which is more than I'd like to pay for a fourth-line guy, but at the same time, you know, he's on the team. It's not like I signed him to that contract to be a fourth-liner. Um, when the Bruins initially traded for him, when they gave up Riley Smith, I'm sure they were thinking he was going to be, um, if not a top-six player, at the very least a top-nine player, and he has been that for the Bruins in real life this year. He's playing on that third line with Spooner and Bolesky, and he certainly can play on the third line in this, but we just have so much depth at our forwards, or with our forwards, that, uh, you know, he's kind of a fourth-liner on this team. But like I said, I don't mind paying him. It's just that if we needed the cap space, I think he'd certainly be an expendable piece. So take a look at the shift from the fourth line here. Kruger puts that one through the five hole of Luongo. That is uh, uh, an area where Luongo has been, um, you know, exposable in the past, so to say. But this is a really stupid glitch in this game. They need to patch this. You just like I meant to go cross crease with this. But this glitch has been in the game for a while now where you pass it and it actually goes through the five hole of the goalie. Um, I really wish they would patch this, but I don't know. They really don't patch this game very often. They released one recently, but I kind of think it made the game worse <laughs> a little bit, to be honest, either way. Uh, here we go, though. The Panthers trying to answer back. It's Tenorti with it. He is going to end up getting a shot blocked there, but Nick Bustad was there to retrieve that, and then he kind of just caught Rask off guard, put that one home on the backhand. This was kind of an unlucky bounce uh, for the Bruins right here. You can see this was a good stick check by Brett Connolly, but Bustad got to the loose puck and then just sort of backhand and that one by our man Tuka Rask. So the captain, Nick Bustad, the American center from Minnesota, Minnesota, puts that one home and ties the game up at two. So here we go now later in the second period, about five minutes to play. Here is a nice little rush opportunity for the Florida Panthers. Here comes the forwards. I believe this is uh, one of their rookies. That is going to be that is going to lead to a nice slapper from the point for Ekblad, but uh, he could not do anything with it. So here we go now. Good forecheck by Jimmy Hayes. He's going to try and set something up here. Try to go back to Spooner there for the one-timer, but either way, still like the forecheck there from Hayes. Playing aggressive, keeping the puck in their own end. And then here we go. Bad penalty on my part here. I tried to stick lift. Didn't have a good angle, so Connolly's going to go to the box, and that is going to end off the second period. So we're going to start the third period shorthanded. There's about 90 seconds left on that power play. But either way, we end off the second period not it up at two so we are should be in store for an exciting third period uh, like I said of two top teams in the Atlantic Division here is a replay of that view stat goal as you can see we get the nice NBC sports graphic to end off the second or head to the second intermission now into the early part of the third here that is actually going to be a penalty coming up a hooking call I'm not sure who that was on but it was Bergeron who got hooked so that sets up a four and four after we killed off the rest of the four on four we get on the power play here final 10 seconds of the power play here comes our man Austin actually it's uh, Mikhail Bodker he takes a nice wrister from the uh, slot right there, but a little too far out. Luongo makes the easy save. And then here we go. Hayes, another rebound opportunity right there. Like I said, he was often just active around the puck, getting to the net here. Had a good opportunity, or second opportunity, or second chance opportunity, but uh, could not do anything with it. So... Anyway, now here we go. An extended zone period time here for the Panthers. It's Trocek. Gets this one back to the point. Tenority tries to get it over to Ekblad, but that would lead to an offside. So good defensive pressure applied by the Bruins. Now here we go back in the Panthers zone. It is Austin Matthews carrying the puck, doing what he does. Gives this one over to Hedman. Hedman takes a wrister, but a good save on the tip right there from Luongo using the glove. Now here we go, under a minute to play in the third period. It's Kruger bringing the puck up, tries to go cross crease there. Actually shoots the pass off of the pads, but he retrieves it, gets it to Hayes. Another cross crease opportunity, and this time Hayes buries it and gives the Bruins a 3-2 lead. So Kevin Hayes from Marcus Kruger puts the Bruins on top here. Good hustle by Kruger to get that puck, and then Hayes with a good positioning. Just got that one by Luongo. Not much he could have done about that. Some porous defense right there from the Florida Panthers. So that gives the Bruins a one-goal lead under a minute to play now, and the Panthers pull their goalie in response. So here we go, Krejci tries to put on the empty netter, could not do it. Botker hits the side of the net. Now it's retrieved by the Panthers. They're going to get one final opportunity here under 10 seconds to play. Back to the point. It's Tenority trying to make something happen. Goes in front, but none of the guys in the white sweaters could corral that one. Now one final opportunity. Back to the point, but it's an offside coming up, and that is going to do it. So the Bruins hold on, and they complete a 3-2 victory. So a clutch goal right there from Kevin Hayes. Both him and Marcus Kruger really good nights I, honestly just our bottom six tonight carried us I thought which was really encouraging I mean I know that we have so much forward depth that we know our bottom six is going to be pretty good most nights but tonight especially just really felt like they uh you know they had their way with the Florida bottom six they helped you know keep the possession in our favor most of the game and you know they produced all our points Kruger had one goal and he had one assist Case had two goals no assist so they were I think uh, they're probably two of the top three stars at the very least here you can see we outshot Florida 30 to 19 controlled the time on attack for the most part and then moving on here to the three stars in just a moment, it's Hayes, Kruger, and Tori Krug. Kruger had one assist and five hits. As you can see there, I don't really know why I'm explaining that. Unless you were blind, you probably could see that for yourself. So anyway, that is going to do it. Hope you guys did enjoy, and I will be trying to post this series more often in the future. I can't really make any promises, but you know, hopefully at the very least once a week I should be able to do that. So anyway, that's going to do it. Hope you guys did enjoy. Thanks for watching, and I'm out. Peace.